Two Cents, the podcast, with your host, Clinton Washington, and your co-host, D'Angelo Gillespie. Let's go! Go, 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 go! Hello, Gillespie. What's going on, my man? Another day. Oh. Maybe if I turn your <laughs> mic on. <laughs> uh, mute me. Yeah. Uh, I was doing all right. Then I found out I was muted, so. Yeah. Shit happens. Yeah. Hey, so uh, before we get this show started, mm-hmm. we're continu- continuing with our series of uh, Women in Business. We want you to talk about our sponsor. How y'all doing uh, wherever you at? Uh, <laughs> This week's podcast is sponsored by Jungle Rose. Jungle Rose is a black veteran-owned lifestyle brand that is focused in hip-hop, cannabis culture, and the progression of self-expression. We are Portland-based with global ambition. If you're looking to record music, plan events, or find out more about about the cannabis culture in PDX, I can be reached at The Real Kush PDX. Or at Kush at JungleRose503.com. Man, it sound like you got some chocolate in top of your mouth. You can't speak. To Man, I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> uh, I I almost want to read this shit all the way up. <laughs> hey, the point to this is Jungle Rose. Make sure y'all check them out. Man, that's my partner. Uh, like I said, at the real Kush PDX. Or you can also send them a email at Kush at JungleRose503.com. That's what's up. Okay, you know we. I think we uh, finally did that correctly. But uh, we're going to keep this thing going. So we continue with our Women in Business series. Part three. Part three. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think this is going to go pretty good. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to announce who we got on the show today. But, you know, more importantly, this is the cool part. We get to continue here at. Richest Ornament Beauty Company, where she's allowing us to record the podcast for a third is. week in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we 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 appreciate that. Do we got a hand clap for that? Oh, I ain't know if you remember. I was gonna goddamn <laughs> 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 push the yellow button, man. Oh. Hey, but we here at Ornaments Beauty Company. All right, no, you can't do that. Richest Ornament <laughs> Beauty Company. Yes, you, you know what. You can't I do- keep telling y'all, every time we do a podcast, quit pouring vodka in my cup. Hey, You, you know, that's hey. that's the problem here. I got too much vodka in. And that's in, all good. As long as you don't say who made the goddamn vodka. Ain't nobody get no more money off of it. Yeah, y'all want to you wanna advertise your brand? Mm-hmm. Send us a check. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, but today we're sitting down with Jelana Canfield, owner of Jelana's Bake Shop. Order your sweet desires at jelanasbakeshop.com. What's up, Jelana? What's up? We appreciate you coming to hang out with us. Thank you for the invite. Also, we have with us today, Sakori Green, a.k.a. the Jewel Preneur with Paparazzi Accessories. What's going on? Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, you know what? I'm loving this uh, this Women in Business uh, series here. I, I wish we could extend it, but we got uh, some other subjects going on. But uh, Jelana? Hello. Baking stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. How did you get into to baking? Sweets and shit. Um, I guess you could say I started when I was a kid baking with the family. My favorite story is to start off saying how I wanted a easy bake oven. And I begged my mom and one day she goes, I got your easy bake oven. <laughs> she pointed to the oven and was like, get to working. So... That's how I got into baking originally, but I pursued actually performing arts first. Okay, okay. Um, During the writer strike, work for me slowed down. Uh, My husband got a job transfer to Maui. I got into the food and beverage industry. Okay. And I started reminiscing about missing my family, so I started baking more and uh, selling cakes in here, here and there on the side. And then I had an injury that brought us here. And I found myself just diving deeper into baking. Even when I was laid up, I'd watch videos, tutorials, just miss it. And start putting together a business plan while laid up. And once I got better, I started pursuing it. And here I am. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So you and said, let's, let's, let's 
take a couple steps back. You said writer's strike. Tell us about that. In 07, there was a writer's strike um, in the industry. The, What's the industry? Uh, film and television. Okay, so okay. the writer's union had a strike. Okay, okay. And I was a union uh, production assistant. So work dramatically so slowed down. Even though I was pursuing more performance, um, I did a lot of production work. Work slowed down dramatically, and my husband got the job transfer. Okay. So, so you went to Maui. Yes. How was Maui? It was beautiful. <laughs> like <laughs> I loved it so much that um, I decided, even when the strike was over, that we would stay. It wasn't just the beaches and the sunsets. It was the culture. It felt safe. It felt healthy. Uh, we got married there. We had our second son there. And just enjoy life yes. over there on, on a exotic island. Okay, yes. that's that's all good. Okay. And where and where are you I'm sorry, where are you originally originally from? California. I was okay. born up north in Woodland, grew up in Sacramento predominantly, but divorced parents, so LA was my second home throughout okay. my life. All right. Well, you know, for the record, just to let everybody know, uh she grew up in Northern California. That's the least part of California. We lease them out to make them sound cool. But they're not really Californians. Uh, I don't know who they are. They're more uh, whatever they are. But uh, California is Compton, Long Beach, Watts, you know, where we do real shit. Um, okay. You know. My siblings might agree with you, but just remember where you get the four W's. Your water, your wine, your weed, and let's see, uh, your good workouts. Okay. <laughs> Weed and water and workouts, okay, <laughs> uh, and wine. All right, that sounds help. So, Corey, what's going on? Hey, hey. We got you in here today. I appreciate y'all. You know, we've been seeing some fly ladies around the city of Portland and Beaverton and Hillsboro, all, you know, jeweled up, and we heard it was because of you, so we had to have you on the show. So uh, tell us about what you got going on. That's what's up. Um, so I'm Sakori Green. I go by the Jewelpreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm out here. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. Um, I've been slinging jewels out here for almost seven years now. Um, I started this business um, back when we were living in Hawaii. Um, my what, husband, what is all this Hawaii <laughs> stuff going on? You know, <laughs> I wasn't ever allowed to live in Hawaii. That's you know, that's, that's not like rich folks shit, right? right. That's unfortunate. No Hawaii yeah. is dope. Okay, okay. I missed out. So but, how um, did you get into this jewelry thing? So um, at the time, I was working full-time for the military housing department. My husband was um, full-time active duty. Thank you for your service, sir, wherever yes. you are today. Yeah, okay. and so I was just looking for, you know, something extra to do, right? Because we're a large family. Um, we're a family of six at the time seven now but you know Hawaii is a beautiful place but I swear you gonna pay for that and so you know even with both of us working full-time we needed something to kind of help the ends meet okay and so um I met this person that was selling jewelry um I was newly natural natural hair and so with your natural hair you know what I'm saying? The accessories accentuate everything that goes with that. And okay, so, okay. you know what I'm saying? I made sure that my earrings and everything was on point. And so I met this person that was um, selling this jewelry, and I met up with her, and I was like, I could do that. Okay. And I did it. Get That's, money. You got to get that money. So we're we, we going to uh, bounce back a little bit. Jelana. What was the hardest part about switching from one industry of the entertainment industry now into this baking industry? The I would say organization of your operations. Okay. And what um, do you mean by that? What I mean is once you map out the steps it takes to pursue a passion and realize the work it takes right and that's more than just the dream you gear yourself mentally physically for that industry 
where I had to reinvent my mentality around how to pursue not just the baking in, because really the baking is about 30% is the right. business structure. Right, right. And uh, I went through like numerous business plans. And just when I was would feel a little intimidated, right. it reminded me it's just like a play. You work on your lines, you keep at it, and you rediscover who you are through the work. Okay, okay. So I would say that was difficult. And knowing that, It's not a, a showmanship as much where you're showing yourself through an outside art form versus right. before it was a physical showmanship. Now I'm showing my artistic skills through an outside entity of my actual physical presence. Okay, okay. So we got the baking in here. We got the jewelry up in here. Now, one of the things that I found, um, especially starting a business, is... The intimidation, like you said, you walk into a situation and the first thing you're thinking is, am I going to be successful with this? Is, uh, are people going to support this? So, Corey, with you having a jury line, how has the support been since you come here? But you know what? Let's back up. Where are you originally from? I'm originally from New York. Okay. Yeah. What part of New York? I can hear it in my voice. <laughs> I'm originally from the Bronx, but I spent a lot of time upstate New York as well. Okay. Upstate New York. So now- Buffalo? We- Albany, Schenectady. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Those, those parts that's not really New York, like mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they don't like Sacramento and the least, the least, the yeah, you know. But you know, so now that you're here, um, you you've left Hawaii. The husband is here working and whatever. And uh, thank you, sir, for your service uh, once again, uh, wherever you are. But uh, <laughs> he's sitting here in the room, folks. Uh, <laughs> But still anyway, th- still thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you for your service. Yeah. But um, also, so now that you're here, how has the support been? You can be honest. Be straight up. Look at the core like, man, y'all trying to fuck my business up. Nah, <laughs> nah, because, um, okay, so honestly, of all the places that I've been, so just a little background. So I started this business in Hawaii. Okay. However, I have moved this business from there to North Carolina, from North Carolina to Mississippi, from Mississippi to here. And so my business is completely mobile. And so wherever I go, I can pack it all up and bring it where I go. Okay. Um, What I have found being in this area is that this has been one of the hardest places for me to break into and network okay why is that i don't know what it is i don't know why it is um wherever i go my my networking is the same um i look for commonalities i look for people who enjoy the same things as i do and um i try to lock arms with people that have the same type of interests as i do um what happened though was that it didn't always end up being a struggle for me when i um came to a point to where I was like, I'm just going to sit back and, um, you know, the people that come to me, right? The people that uh, I, you know, attract. Right. Right? So what I put out and then the people that I attract, those are the people that I am going to focus on. I'm not going to focus on the, the the groups I can't get into or the the, the, the spots I'm not invited to who I attract and and who, um, you know, comes to me as I'm out doing these vendor events, doing these parties, um, you know, talking on social media and things of that, that nature. Those are the people that I'm going to focus on. And through those people, I find more support. Okay. So now, is it, do you find that you receive less or more support from the black community? You know now. what? We gotta well, be honest. I, 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 feel, um, I feel like you gotta say now because just going by what she's used to, New York, South Carolina, uh, what's it, North or South? North. North Carolina, and then Mississippi. Shit, you got a you got a major black population versus where she is now. So, but like I said, my business is mobile, right? And so, 
you know, not only can I move my business to wherever I am, but I can also market my business to any and everybody. Right. Right. And so, you know, um, I think it's it. I think my biz, my. I attract more black people. OK. But I also have a good amount of, you know, non-black customers as right. well. But so, the marketing ain't changed, right? The marketing don't change, right? Nah. I mean, you you've been you've been rock, rocking the same way. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So you know, now let's get back to these cookies. <laughs> <laughs> these cookies and shit. Hey, I had Thank one of these you. cookies, man. And, yeah. You know, I, she, I was, she brought some sugar cookies. I think it's uh, some chocolate chip in there, and uh, I think it's that the, the double, double chocolate, tri- the, triple double, chocolate, something had, like yeah, that. Yeah, I had a double chocolate. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And I had the sugar one. That was that was good too. Yeah, you being a little greedy. <laughs> I had two. She brought all. She brought a bunch of goddamn cookies. I ain't eat all that shit. <laughs> so what? What else is your your specialty when it comes to this baking? Uh, custom cakes, uh, custom cookies, morning pastries, with a focus on cinnamon rolls. Oh. And designer desserts. What, what I also it? do. What's a designer dessert? <laughs> I, I just like the way that sounds. <laughs> Uh, my dessert options are designed around your event and what you're looking for. Um, desserts and cakes are the only two items you can't get in the web store. Right. Um, cupcakes you can, cookies, and morning pastries. You have your choice depending on each item, either vegan, gluten-free, both, and dairy-free. Uh, cinnamon rolls are only vegan and traditional, but cookies come in all variations, Cakes I do, gluten-free, dairy-free, and traditional. Designer desserts and custom cakes, I feel each occasion, it represents what you're experiencing, what you're celebrating, uh, whether it's an anniversary, I get to know, let's say it's an anniversary, I did an anniversary in early June, and... I asked what the fav- favorite flavors were of the couple, a little bit about their history. I already knew them a little bit, so but I feel like with desserts, it's something very sacred. You can just go into any store and get a dessert, but I will design a dessert around who you are and the event. I got a question. Yes. Now, how long have you been living out here in Oregon? 2016, okay. like were very you, beginning. Were you doing gluten-free cakes? Before you came out here, or has the market demanded this shit? The market <laughs> changed me on gluten. Well, 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 yeah, well, I, well, 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 listen, I, I'm asking. In now Hawaii, that, I did vegan and traditional, but oh, here is where I got into the gluten free market. I'm yes. telling you right now, I'm from the South. <laughs> and I went to get my mama a goddamn cake, and I told her it's gluten free. My mom would probably be like, what the fuck is gluten? <laughs> I'm being honest, like, and but 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 but, but we out here, we out, we out here. So I was, that, that's why I'm like, she doing vegan and gluten free. Who who told you this shit? Who told you to do this shit? Because I'm telling you, right, I'm never mind. We ain't working. I'm sorry. Go gluten free. But it's not just about Oregon. Uh, my traditional, uh, my slogan is flavor focused, simply baked. I like to focus on the flavor and not the sugar. I feel like American culinary, or no, not culinary, American confection has depended too much on sweeteners, whether it's sugar or some kind of um, sucrose corn syrup. And it's hurting not the whole country, but it's hurting our community yeah, very much so. Absolutely. So I am very proud that I want to spread especially to our children our older community I want to bring them healthier treats you shouldn't have to say I can never have a cookie but still be healthy you know um don't have like two dozen every day but everyone deserves a little treat every you know and we appreciate right? you bring, you're damn right. And we appreciate you bringing the, the and, cookies. And uh, they're very tasty. Thank you. You know, uh, it's it's kind of funny. So uh, last year I was over in Paris, and I'm uh, reading Coca-Cola cans over there. I'm reading um, the oh. ingredients on different things. I know that sounds weird. Why am I reading Coca-Cola cans? The reason why, because I go and I'm like, I'm a Diet Coke drinker. And, I, I you know, Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi. Ooh. And I know that's not good. But I go over there and I'm drinking it and the sugar content of a regular Coke is less than the sugar content of a diet Coke over in this area, right? Over in the United States. 
when you eat a dessert, say over in Paris or somewhere like that, the sugar content is a lot less because they don't use the high fructose corn, corn syrup. syrup. Yeah. They're using, I, you know, and I don't know everything that they was using, but it was a healthier option and it was still good, but it wasn't overly flavored sugar. So, you know, I understand where you're coming from. That's how I feel when I taste the Diet Coke, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is terrible. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. No. You know what? A Diet Coke makes, it makes sense when you get a double burger with extra cheese mm-hmm. and some fries. And a Diet Coke, it makes you feel Man, a little less guilty. Man, don't have, um, ki- don't have kill me. Go on and goddamn, <laughs> right. be car- go yeah. on and kill all me right. all the way. Go be careful way. with that. <laughs> I want a triple cheeseburger and some fries. Let me get no. I want the regular coke. Don't play your hands out here. I'm Just kill you 100. percent Please kill me all the way. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, the diet coke is a slower <laughs> kill because the artificial sweetener they use um, when it hits your um, cells and especially your um, your brain cells. It craves it actually more. So you tend to, when you have a Diet Coke, yeah, it's less calories in that one can, but you're going to crave sugar even more in other areas. I agree. Delana, are you saying that Diet Coke is bad for us? <laughs> I just want to be clear with I you. just think My it's not. actually better to have a real Coke. Oh, okay. well, you know what? I, and I just think that one re- real Coke. rephrase this to Diet <laughs> Soda. Diet so- I, you're right. Oh, my bad. I, I didn't I'm say sorry. nothing about you know, I'm sorry. We any talking, companies. We ain't talking about Coke. We just talking about everybody yep. who's who dealing with NutraSweet <laughs> and Coke. <laughs> I didn't say nothing about them either. Man, my lawyers is going to have to be know, all right? over this. I'm just kidding, right? Coke. We looking for some sponsors. Can whatever. we stop Coke. saying Coke, please? I know, please. I, Coke is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. I, I, whatever. We're going to have to erase this whole podcast because I'm telling you, they're going to send us a cease and desist letter. <laughs> my sister's a lawyer. She's going to get on me I, so bad. You know, hey, look, hey, tell your sister we're going to need some extra representation. <laughs> My co-host over here, he don't give a shit about my wallet. Hey, I got a question uh, for both of y'all. Let me. So, Corey, uh, Jelana's talking about how she pretty much, she's trying to structure her, her, her business for, or, that's what I got from it. Structure your business for your, for your customer. I got a question. In living in a population that don't always look like us, do you find it harder to market because you, you you made the comment that you know with your natural look you know I believe the things that you wear I mean the things that you sell and wear they accentuate your own personal beauty. Do you find that that's harder to push with with women that don't look like you? I don't because what I like is what I like, right? But okay. I have something for everybody, right? Okay. So I have dainty stuff. I have big bold Afrocentric stuff. I have men's jewelry. I have children's jewelry. So I don't think that that is, um, you know, really an obstacle for me. Okay. And I wanted to ask because, you know, it's like I feel like a lot of times with black businesses, some sometimes we get caught up in trying to, you know, we had this conversation with DeVita a, a week ago pretty much, and she was telling us how she doesn't really want to get caught up into it. And, and to the buyer or, or, the, or the customer. And you know what I'm saying? She wants to focus more on what she's doing more so than who's coming in to patronize. If she just handles her business, everything else will smooth out. And, and like, you know, I feel that. But I also understand the fact that sometimes I feel like being here, we are in a foreign place. You know what I mean? To, to, to what we are used to. So that that's why I ask y'all because I understand that you know what I'm saying I, I I sometimes feel like even in what just I do I sometimes I feel like sometimes it's hard to make that connection with people who you gotta make the connection with like with y'all or or with people sometimes I feel like just me being myself you guys kind of know my story you know okay this man is out here trying to do this I feel like sometimes we have to sell ourselves. And it's it's a double edged sword because while you want to be patronized and you want customers, you also still want to be authentic to yourself without trying to curve or or just what you do for a certain demographic. So that, that I just want to give you some context of why I was asking like 
about the hurdles of, of you know, the, the customer. I agree but with I, that. And I also believe that um, if you focus on the activity, right, the marketing, exactly what it is that you need to do, no matter who you selling to, no matter who you talking to, no matter where you at or whatever that is, that if you focus on the activity that it takes to get you where you trying to go, then all that other external is not really going to matter. And so at the end of the day, you said, you woke up this morning, you said, today I'm going out and I'm going to share my business with 20 people and I'm not coming home till it's done. So now let me ask you this. So I'm the type of person that when I come up with a business idea, I don't necessarily go to anyone for their opinion or approval, right? Because I'm a strong believer in, um, I have this vision and I'll share this vision with you, but I don't really want your opinion. How do you make sure that you stay on track with your business and your marketing plan and what you're trying to do? And we will start with you. Staying true to your original mission statement and what your purpose is. Um, like D'Angelo, you were saying how I cater to the customer. I, I do, but there is a limit how far I'll go. I'm not going to just make anything. I'm going to stay within what I believe in. Um, there are certain things I won't completely do. Like my cakes, I'm not going to make a full fondant cake. I have that on my website. I'll add it to children's cake for a theme party um, because, you know, kind of need fondant for my, like, Sonic the Hedgehog cake to look like Sonic. Right. But that wasn't, I don't do full covered fondant cakes. It was an accent to the Sonic head I put on top, but the actual uh, frosting is still a European-based buttercream, which has a lot less sugar than American buttercream. And I stay true to how I felt like the ingredients I use, even if, let's say, the parent's like, I don't care, do whatever. Um, I'm going to always stay true um, to my mission. My mission is to provide a cleaner source confection to my community. And when I say my community, of course, the black community, but also the community I live in, children tend to be ones that eat, uh, enjoy sugar. So I want them to start off knowing a cookie shouldn't be super sweet. So as they go into adulthood, that um, mentality of what a cookie tastes like isn't still there, where they feel like their whole lives it should be something super sweet. Because that's really where it starts is... Um, in our developmental age of what we think confection should taste like. Right. So, so Corey, now same question to you. How do you stay on task? And I'm quite sure you as a business owner, whether it's from your husband, family members, or your kids telling you that if I was you, you should go this direction. How do you stay on task and stay focused on what your goals are? Well, She used the word mission, and I use the word vision, right? Because if you have a clear vision um, of what it is you're trying to accomplish, what it is you want to do, then you'll keep that in front of you. A lot of people call it their why, right? So if your why is big enough, you'll do enough. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing to have somebody saying, well, what about this? Especially if you trust them. You respect their opinion and, you know, you value what they have to offer to you. And so if my husband came to me and I said, this is what I want to do. And he said, well, have you thought about this or have you thought about that? I would take that into consideration because we all need accountability, right? We all need somebody on our side that will say, well, just think about this for a second. And so I'm not opposed to people to certain people having a say or, you know, some type of input to where, you know, it makes me think beyond, um, you know, something that I bring to the table. I'm not, I'm not above that. Okay. That's what's up. So now you guys are in business. When people tell us about our podcast, we'd be like, 
Ain't nobody trying to hear all that. <laughs> Listen, I already know about you and your your, your ability to take you constructive criticism. Constructive? <laughs> It was constructive, you would have stayed your ass in your seat. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Listen, so, all right, you guys got your business going. Um, and through this podcast, I think we've been able to connect, what, five different uh, women in businesses? We had Turk and Fab. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is five. Five. Is five. So, you guys, not necessarily saying... Um, how do you guys incorporate each other into your business plans in order to be supportive of each other? You mean going forward? Yeah, go, yeah well, going forward or just thinking or back of yeah. how, because when, when, when I look at my business and I go, okay, how can I push the next guy, all right? And how can I incorporate maybe a slower progressing business and help them speed up their process? So, just a roundtable discussion right now, thinking about jury and desserts don't go together. But how can you guys push each other's business? A pop up party, yeah. jewelry and desserts. That's right. Ooh. Word of mouth. Get some sparkling okay. wine going up yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always ways to um, incorporate things that women mm -hmm. love, right? Mm -hmm. We love jewelry. We love. Desserts, you know what I mean? We love wine. We love coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, coffee. coffee. There's so many ways that we can incorporate, you know, things with each other. And then just good old-fashioned word of mouth. So, you know, Jelana and I just met today before we got here. And the first thing we did was exchange social media info, right? So when I see her pop up on my timeline with the bomb cake or something like that. And, you know, my business is not just about me. I have a team of almost a thousand men and women across the country, right? And so when they are hitting marks in their businesses and they are selling like crazy and they are, you know, sharing their business, maybe I'll have her bake them something and I can have her ship it to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's putting her business out there somewhere in Kansas or New York or Florida or whatever. And, um, you know, that's giving her that, um, you know, that, that, uh, exposure and, you know, also showering my team as well. And so, you know, that's what I think about when I think about incorporating our businesses together. Yes. Uh, Jelana, you? Wearing her jewelry when I ha go to events. Um, I mean, right now, this is an example. Davida brought us together, um, Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me correct um, y'all. Let me let me correct that. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Exactly. Sue sent the podcast yeah, brought right. y'all together. All right. right. We want all A's. Hey, you know what? We, we want A. Hey, we want everybody to credit. Please give us our credit. credit. Uh, okay. Eyes. You're right. So Pardon. Shout out to Two Cent. Yes. Two Cent. No, no. Let's get it right. Two Cent the podcast. Oh, thank you. Right. Two Cent the podcast. Yeah. We like Davida too. We appreciate y'all. Thank you yeah, very you know. much. Davida, she good people. She <laughs> let us use her spot. But, uh, <laughs> you know, come on now. You, no, know. you know what? I, I, I think everything y'all said is super important because like I said, like well, like Clinton said, this has been five women that we've highlighted in business. And the beauty of this is it, it might not it might not lead to more people at Clinton's business. It might not lead to anything that D'Angelo is doing, but it's still a highlight on, on you guys. And that's dope because if nothing else, y'all know each other now. Like uh, mm -hmm. Sikori know Zaza from the first one. And now both of y'all know DeVita. And pretty sure Nisi and Zaza will know DeVita. And then, you know, Jelana will know them. And, and, and so now... Y'all have got, you got a little community there of, of just, what it is is eventually we start knowing people who into everything. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So when somebody does a birthday party and they're looking for a cake, you're not going to let them go outside of Jelani. You're going to be like, nah, nah, I got that. I got, I got your cake person. When somebody trying to find a salon or some product, you're going to be like, nah, I got you. You really got you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's really important that we do this because a lot of people, especially here, I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. It's all good though. It's a lot of goddamn lip service. You know, motherfuckers will have you believe that they are super invested in this community. They are super 
go hard folks for you. Let me tell you something, man. If you go hard for me, speak my name in rooms that I'm not in. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Yes. Hell, they talk all this shit to me in my goddamn face. Speak room, speak my name in the rooms that I'm not in. Exactly. Like, 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 like Davida spoke your name in a room that you was not in. You, you gotta, you gotta appreciate people like that. Like, yes. shit, there was no, you selling your cakes do not benefit her at all. But still, she still spoke your name just enough for us to know your name. You see what I'm saying? I know Sakori. She my partner, partner. It makes sense. We are doing women in business. I would be, I would be, a, a just. I, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say. I'd just be a fucked up ass friend to <laughs> to let us do some women in business and to be like, nah, score ain't doing shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, it's just word. Yeah. So I just, <laughs> it's just really. I, I feel. I feel like it's necessary and it's important, man. And I'm, I'm glad we're doing it. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, ladies, this. Um, Sakori, so got a husband. Mm-hmm. I do. You got kids. I do. And sure. she's a grandmother. You know what? I it, and and I gotta say this. I gotta throw this out there. I gotta throw the red. Corey look about twenty three. Yeah. I hear talking about she a grandmother. She a grand- <laughs> and, you know what? And that's the thing about it. You know what? You you gotta hate people who look like they can be your kid's kid. She she looks beyond twelve. You know? And that was his nickname for me with the first time he met me. I, you know what? I and what up, twelve? I was like oh, twelve because I'm like this. Why is this dude bringing this little girl to the club? She like, should we call the police on him? <laughs> that was that was my thought. And then she, you know, I meet her kids and uh, met her daughter. She was pregnant at the time, and now she's a grandmother. How do you juggle that with your? And I don't want to sound misogynistic. We done had an education oh, on that, yeah, but I'm yeah, gonna yeah. say it anyway. How we, do you juggle we ain't that? We've been misogynistic since episode three. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we got beat up so bad. Uh, and y'all didn't hear it off. Oh man. But anyway, you you have your wifely duties. You have your mother. Uh, yeah, I went. You said there. you don't want to sound misogynistic. <laughs> well, what? I don't know. And listen, I don't know anything <laughs> yeah. else to say. Straight tell her about your tell about your wifely duties. I know. But, but I'm just saying. You, you I went have, to Mills, an old woman's college, to watch it. I was sitting there like. <laughs> Okay, never Listen, mind. Yeah. you 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 have those uh, responsibilities, know, responsibilities <laughs> yes. as a wife. Um, y'all got that sounds a, better. Your responsibilities <laughs> as a your yes. your wife. I, you know what? Listen, man. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, I'm trying to get past my male chauvinistic ways, but oh, man. wifely duties just sound so cool and traditional. Uh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, hey, anyways. you know what? If they ever ask me to host the Grammy, somebody's gonna bring this up and be like, you know, remember yes. that time when he said yeah. wifely duties? And hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like Kevin Hart, and they're gonna drag you. Yes. I'm not apologizing. <laughs> you know what? Give me time to get educated. That's that's why we had that episode on misogyny because we knew it was time to get educated. But you know what? We're not it was gonna time backtrack. Time to get rough. I ain't saying that. <laughs> the milkman coming soon. I feel like I'm in the fifties. <laughs> Where's the loyalty? I thought we was ride or die. We go down together. We was. I just need them to support the shit I do in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> we try to promote this. We ain't trying to run nothing off. Guys. Okay, so with all the family responsibilities. There we go. There we go. The good. family yes. responsibility. How do you juggle that and business? Whew, well, I mean, it's just really about um, discipline, right? Um, you know, I take care of my grandson full time while my um, daughter goes to school. And so, you know, you have to find those moments where you can do the most (laughs) and get the most out of the time that you have, right? And so, you know, one of the things that, you know, when I was really, really at the height of doing great in my business, I had started this, um, this um, routine, right? It was a morning routine where I got up an hour earlier than I normally did. And, um, you know, I, there were, there was a series of things I did. So it was meditation, visualization, um, exercise, reading, journaling. um, And, you know, I just gave myself that extra hour to do that. And when I was doing the very, very best, 
was when I was doing those things. Okay. And so you really have to have the discipline to set aside the time to do those things and to, you know, give yourself time for self-care as well. So I got four kids and a grandchild and a husband and a business. And so I can't pour from an empty cup. And so when I got to take 30 minutes or a half a day, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean, and just say, yo, Give me a little moment to get myself together, um, you know. And he, my husband always tells me, just tell us what you need, and we'll make that happen for you. Okay, okay. Tell us what, how much time you need. Tell us when you need this time, and we'll make that happen for you. And so that is, you know, one of the things. So having that discipline, doing those things um, an hour earlier in the morning, and self-care is what is has helped me to be successful in my business. Jelana? Self-care is very important. Um, but, you, okay, I, and I get to self-care, and I, I, don't, I don't mean but, to be dismissive. But how I know, you, man, you oh, quiet me. He's like, woman hey. talk. Damn your meditation. <laughs> how, I'm trying to figure out how you get this That's my husband. Money. This does not go well when you try to how quiet you me down. <laughs> Damn no, your no, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm asking is, is, you know, I, I understand oh, how she balances the self-care and she has to have that. But how do you balance the family? It's difficult. I'm also a mother and a grandmother. Uh, you a grandmother too? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't get to be with our granddaughter, though, on a regular. She lives with her, um, of course, our... <laughs> oldest son right uh, i'm technically his stepmom he has an incredible mother um that they live close to so um uh, uh Kristen, uh watches her a lot and gets to be there for all the wonderful moments but we tag team in fact i made her cake we were originally going to go to her birthday party which is this weekend she just turned one okay okay happy um, birthday little lady yep yeah. And her name's Davina. Okay. Um, so, but because of COVID, we didn't go. So um, Kristen came up with a great idea. She's like, well, just make the cake and send it so you're still here. So I made the cake. In fact, my husband shipped it this morning. Okay. And, okay. Um, so we could still be there. But we do have our son who's nine here. We still make time to check in with uh, our oldest son, and um, and it is hard. My mother's here, um, which we spend a lot of time making sure she stays safe and happy, and um, it's difficult uh, with homeschooling right now, too, right. with COVID, starting the business. Uh, I got laid off be due to COVID, and that's when I took the business from part-time to full-time. Okay. And uh, so we're still in this, like growing stage and my sister's here my best friend from high school who's like a sister is here so we have a support but it's not like this giant network physically here but my siblings in LA they help so much by whether it's ordering my cookies or pastries for their offices their events um spreading the word so but it is difficult um, when it comes to the day-to-day -day stuff, you get up. I get up every day by 5.45, the latest, get things going. Orders start coming in as early as 7 when we open. My husband han handles a lot a lot of the aspects of the business. He really came up with great branding concepts. Um, everything from branding to inventory, deliveries. Um, it's intense. It this does. This, this There's times I'm so tired. So I'm the so first, the first two ladies we interviewed, they were, uh, they they were single, and then we met uh, Davida. We brought her onto the show, Sakori, and now you. And I'm hearing a lot of husband, husband support, and how the husbands, um, Davida's husband said that he was her best cheerleader, biggest cheerleader, right? bigger, mm -hmm. biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. We got 
Sikori, Shout out to the homie Quan. You know, Sakori's husband is sitting over here. I don't know if he's security security or she just can't drive, but you know. <laughs> um, he's sitting over there. Hey, sir, thank you for your she service. She's from New York. <laughs> New Yorkers New Yorkers have a they hard don't time. Drive. You know, they don't drive. I just want to thank him for his service. Uh you know, appreciate the things that you did for our country, our yes. community. And um, if you having any PTSD issues oh, right now, um, <laughs> please take them outdoors. <laughs> um, when I see a brother that's been in the military and he's wearing camouflage, I, I, I tend to get a little nervous. Uh, I gotta, I, you I gotta, know, gotta. anytime I want to go home and I put on my camouflage, I'm feeling like I want to be back into Bosnia. Oh no! I can't, I just, I can't I, tell y'all about Bosnia, I, I, but it was it was it was it was. If something. you send me in my camouflage, it just mean I've been the old navy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, old navy, huh? I got a, I got a question, ladies. So, you guys both, you, you, we're in the middle of COVID. You, you're trying to push the business. What is the most effective way that you guys have been thus far in advertising? What works? right now if anything social, I mean, social media social media okay yeah I, I, word of I, I, mouth but yeah let me let me let y'all right. who was who's talking loud fuck it all right so Corey, tell me about your social media presence and make sure you also list your social media jelani you're next i just want you i want to make sure we get this moment to take our time and make sure y'all can actually if if whatever way you guys are advertising i want to ask y'all that because Whatever, however you're doing it, I want to make sure we give you a minute to do it. So tell me about your social media and make sure you actually let the let the people know what it is so they can uh, find. So you. my, um, as you guys heard before, my I've moved this business through many states, right? Yeah. And so everywhere I go, I gotta rebuild my. Cl- um, clientele. I got to rebuild my customer base, my hostess base. I got to find new people that are having events. I got to find new people that are, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in interested in what I have to offer. And so social media has been my thing from day one. Because living in Hawaii, all I knew was we were an office of like seven people. Again, I was working full time for military housing unit. Right. And so we were a office of like seven people. So when I started my business, my launch party was me in my office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody from my office came to my house. It, it is. I had yeah, I had punch, I had um uh food, I had all of that and all of them came and that was how my business kicked off. Um other than that, all of my family was on the East Coast. Anybody that I had that I met was through social media. So I found, you know, mom groups. I found natural hair groups. I found uh, uh, black women in business groups. I found moms in business. Anything that pertained to me that I could find a commonality with other people, that is how I use my social media to grow my business. Again, as I said before, I have a very large team of people that have said, I want to do what you want to do um, and have, you know, locked arms with me business wise. The great majority of those people I have never met. That's a blessing. In I only though. know them through social media. Right. And so, you know, when I hear people say people take social media too seriously or, you know, what I'm saying they are using social media for all these different things. And it's not to like it's it's just a big world out there where you could grow your business, grow your network, use them to meet because each person that you meet, they are not the destination. They're the doorway. So each person that you meet is they may not support you or they may not, uh, you know, do anything, but they know somebody that might always, you know what I'm saying? And so looking at people in that way and using social media as a doorway rather than a destination is, um, I think that is a, a great way to, to, to grow. And let me have your social media again. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the jewelpreneur. Um, and then you can look for me, Socori Green, S E C C O R I Green, like the color. Okay. All right. So, um, 
Come a little closer to your mic and uh, say your name again. Sikori Green. And spell it for us. S-E-C-C-O-R-I and Green, G-R-E-E-N. Mm-hmm. And then you can find me on Instagram and Facebook um, for um, my business pages at The Jewelpreneur. And she be going live. Yes, I go live very often. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, if nothing else, follow me and say hello. Um, like my business pages and, you know, share, spread the love. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Outside ain't open. So, shoot. Exactly. That means they should be online looking at your ass. They online yeah. anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> online anyway, exactly. <laughs> Jelana, go ahead. Let me, <laughs> Jelana, let, me t- let me know about your social media. Tell me how social media has impacted your business and make sure that you give your information. Social media has been a big core of my business, especially mm, moving to a state, a community, a city I've never lived in before. Uh, when I started, technically I started in September and before I really started posting like on a regular, regular, like every day or at least four times a week, I didn't get the same kind of traffic. But once I became an e-commerce where you can actually purchase your baked goods on my website and I was posting on a regular, understanding how to use hashtags more and groups, um, it's like what Sakori was saying, groups have been a Big core, and I gotta give a shout out to a coworker, a co a t- teacher I worked with at Blueberry Elementary, April. Uh, she's like, "Why don't you post on, you know, Save Washington Eats?" And it was a group set up during COVID, and a lot of businesses were struggling. And once I started with that group, it led to another group and another group, and it really made a difference. Once I got into the group world. And with Instagram, setting up a business page, not just my own personal page, which is Jelana's Bake Shop, J-E-L-A-N-A, Bake Shop. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. My website is jelanasbakeshop.com. And again, you can order majority of the items right there in the web store. And for cakes and designer desserts, you can fill out the cake form, and I will get back to you within a few hours. It only takes me a little time if I'm baking, and I'll get back to you. Price list for your average cake and desserts are listed, and the price really only changes for custom items depending on what you want to add. All right. Man, that's that's what's up. So, ladies, we we, we got to invite you guys to a segment of – our podcast wait. that oh, wait, 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 huh? I want us to go ahead and plug the cookout, and I want to invite the ladies. Can, can I? Can I get to the point? I thought she was gonna go to. I thought she was gonna go to put it on. I thought you. I, you know what? All right, never mind. I don't know. Our contractual doing. agreement was I'm the host and I get to lead us where we're yeah. going. But you know I, I, what? I'm the co-host. I, I think this whole thing would height. You you like to push me around. You know. can, I, can I do a quick uh, shout out uh, too? No, go ahead, oh. go ahead. Okay, there's a yeah. few Hillsboro women that I, have looked out. Yeah, do, for a, all do of a us. shout out because um. I didn't have nothing important to say. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Shit. Y'all go ahead. Go, oh, y'all okay. go ahead. Like, At Hillsboro underscore junkie, um, Kipperlin St. Clair. She hooked me up with Crystal, who owns Pumpernickel uh, Pet Store and Doggy Bakery, who hooked me up with Davida. So I feel like it's a lot of women I, uh, in Hillsboro. That's really made a connection and women that aren't necessary, you know, non-black women. Just I feel that's, like there's a strong uh, female energy in that's dope. the Hillsborough community, yeah, that's good. which I've lived in other states. And sometimes no matter how much you think, OK, we're all women, we're all really dealing with the same things, no matter what our skin color is. There is a divisiveness, whereas here I didn't feel that. And I'm very grateful for this community. So there's a lot of women here that are looking out for each other, especially in the business world. Repeat their info. I want to make sure we, we give them some light. <laughs> um, Kipler and St. Clair um, is at Hillsboro underscore junkie. She really is a great networking okay. um, consultant that brings different businesses together, especially small businesses. Okay. Crystal... Michaels Monroe, who owns Pupper Nickel uh, 
doggy bakery and pet store. A couple okay. stores down uh, here in Google. downtown Hillsboro. And of course, Davida here at Richest Ornament Beauty Company. Hey, shout your friends hey. up. I feel you. We, and now Sakori. Yeah, we, we appreciate Corey. that. So yes. what you we're gonna give you a home homework assignment. Um, you'll get D'Angelo's contact information and then you have to reach out to those ladies to make sure that you have their social media. So as we post this episode, it's located in the episode description of all of these women in business. And that's why this series of uh, Absolutely. podcasts is talking about women in businesses. All right. So, you know what? Uh, since I was so rudely interrupted. Hold because, on, I just want to say it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to get no. an email. I was going to get an email for them to send no. this shit to me, dog. No, no. All right, well, fuck you're it. Just send it to me if y'all send me in the street. You know what? Throw, me, throw your card at me. You going to keep okay, You know God what? They damn. only do this because of my height. I swear to God. I, if I, had a, I was only going to get an email, play. <laughs> no. Jelana's Big Shop at gmail.com. Ladies, feel free to send me an email at two cents. The, the number two, two cent the podcast at gmail.com. And what I will make sure that I do is definitely put your websites and your IG uh, locations inside of the description of the podcast. If you are a woman and you have a business, send it to us. We're going to do our part. You know they what I'm saying? They won't let me talk, Portland. <laughs> All right, listen. Go for it, man. You got it. It's all oh, on oh, you. I get my show back now? It's all on you. It's, all I, on I, you I, it's, it's on me now. I thought we was a you, part of this You know. <laughs> Go for it, though. Uh, just to let y'all know, I'm looking for a new co-host. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I can't get rid of this guy. This, this is my dog. But anyway, so ladies, um, what is your pet peeve living here in Oregon? They are business owners, clean. We can't play this game with them. We, we, no, we got to. Okay. So, well, Corey, okay. we're going to go with that you That is first. our question we ask at the end of our, all of our podcasts. Man, they clean. They, okay, listen. I'll tell y'all what, ladies. Rem, remember, y'all got business out here. So, y'all. Hey, y'all. I jumped in with two feet. You got to jump in with two feet. Come on, Sakori. So you pet peeve in Portland or Oregon. Oh, I know you got one, Sakori. Don't be over there thinking hard like I'm you don't know what I'm thinking really it hard. Oh, you love it. Okay, she don't have no pet peeves. Okay, look, cool. Sakori love everybody. Bye, jury, y'all. All right, bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sakori love right. everybody. Bye, shit. Jelana, uh, go- go- what is your pet peeve of, of Oregon? There are still stereotypes, and I understand you don't have a large black community to interact with among a lot of uh, Oregonians. Mm -hmm. And um, I I do feel like there's an awareness of their of some lack of knowledge of how diverse we are. But that moment of a little bit of surprise, like uh, I grew up swimming and um, I also surf. And when I'll mention like uh, like putting on sunscreen. Oh, you use sunscreen. You know, <laughs> it's moments like that, you know. You you're the first black. <laughs> you are the first black surfer that I've ever met. I mean, you lived in Hawaii, but you're that's the first where I got black into it. Oh, 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 you don't gotta tell me. I got damn know where you got into it. Hey, I'm gonna you let y'all know. I'm afraid of water. I don't have no. Hey, hey, man, I don't hey, even hey, have a bathtub hey, in my house. Hey, we hey, do all hey, <laughs> Don't get on here, that bullshit. Don't get on. Hey, 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 don't don't get on here perpetuating that goddamn stereotype. Hey, we everybody. On Tuesday, in the podcast and swim, and if, and if he can't, we're gonna teach him. Yeah. This song. Listen, don't get on Hey, this. the United States Navy sent me through swim class, and I failed all of them. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Shut well, thank I you for your service. Yeah, you I know, didn't know that. Yeah, hey, so I'm letting you know. I'm afraid. Oh, no. Hey, you know what? I'm afraid of water. They go, look, I'm short, dude. How you fr- how you been in the Navy all this time? You always afraid of water. I'm a black man. We figure out ways to survive. No, you're not nah, finna motherfucking put, put that on, on us. You're not finna put that on us. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. We figure out ways to survive. Right, don't put that on me, Ricky. Hey, 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 listen. But we didn't have the same kind of access. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what? I had the access. Okay. Know, I, 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 I used to go to the park where they had a swimming pool, but that three feet of water was as far as I was going. <laughs> Oh man, no, three feet crazy. of water. When I get when I get to five feet, I'm almost drowning. So oh, you know, no. Say. Oh wait, hey, but you know what? We Hold on, th- Sakura, you have no pet peeve. Hey man, listen, I just want to make sure Sakura didn't have one for. I gotta look out for my folks. Yeah, 
Do you have a pet peeve of Portland before we before I turn before Clinton finish the show? I can't think of one. I know that's right. So Corey said, "I love everybody. Everybody come fuck with yep. me." <laughs> no, that's right. So Corey, hey, don't get that money back. No one's <laughs> rude about it either. So I just want to put that out there. It's more of a I'm you. learning still vibe, which is fine. I'd rather have someone have that learning vibe versus a hostile vibe. Jelana says she love all y'all too by yep. the cakes. <laughs> yep. In fact, my son's on the swim team and it's more diverse than any swim team I've ever seen, especially in a smaller community. Go Hillsboro Heat. All right, that's okay. what's up. Hillsboro Heat. Hey, we appreciate you ladies coming out to be on Two Cent, the podcast where oh. I am the host, but I get <laughs> bullied and pushed around and and and, and, and maybe I should just person. quit. Um, <laughs> go do something else that people my height do but anyway you know i'm i'm gonna I'm a suck up this uh this vodka right here and feel better about myself as oh, i man. you know but anyway no we're just joking around but we appreciate you ladies coming out we're going to post your company's information absolutely into the information for this podcast mm-hmm. and listen for you guys that are listening to this podcast we we said it once we're going to say it again come out and support don't support one time. Don't just support twice. All right? Make sure you come out and you support these businesses. And the best way for you to support is coming up August 15th. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, D'Angelo, tell us about August 15th. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> coming up on August 15th, you are formally invited to the cookout at Clinton's Kitchen. This is on the 15th of August, 2020. It is from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is a chance for Portland, Portland natives to welcome newcomers to the Rose City. This is hosted and sponsored by Black Portland and Two Cent the Podcast. Adrian Wright will be there with live performances by Cool Nuts and DJ Fatboy. EJ the DJ will be spinning. Listen, man, this is good food. This is good drink. This is good people, man. We are trying to bring this community together and we want to network bring your business cards and come out and fellowship with us man listen 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 this is the most important part of what the fuck i'm about to say social distancing rules are in full effect wear your motherfucking mask and we ain't yes. even playing with it we are going to be responsible we want to have a good time we want to fellowship man we understand everybody have been has been in in the house however we want to get out. We want to fellowship with our folks. We want to network, but we do want to stay safe, man. It is imperative that we do that, and I'm not joking about that at all. So wear your mask. If you came together, you can sit together. If not, you will be six feet apart. I'm just being honest with you, man. I don't want to play no games with you, and I don't want to have you believe something that ain't true. So that's what I want to say, and I will see you all on the 15th. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for listening to another episode. This concludes our series of Women in Business. Mm -hmm. We appreciate everybody that has come on to our podcast from Zaza to DJ. We have Nisi twerking fab. Mm -hmm. We have Davida who has allowed us to use her space. We got Sakori and we got our baker, Surfer, the lady in the house right now, Jelana. We really appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We want to shout out the husbands because we heard yes. it from the ladies' mouths about the support that they have been having. Oh and we man. appreciate you gentlemen out there. When they say protect your queen, we see you. Mm-hmm. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate you. Once again, Portland, Oregon, you guys get out here. Support these businesses. Absolutely. That's my two cents. We appreciate you. Peace. <laughs>